Birkenberg this morning. We're right on the front there. God's been leading us to preach. Listen very carefully. Luke chapter 22, start at verse 31. It says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I pray for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. He said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Amen. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Up down to verse 54. It says, Then took they him, speaking of Jesus, and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together. Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. Peter said, Man, I am not. About the space of one hour, after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. Now the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Let's pray. Father, I come. Lord, I'm unworthy in every way. Lord, if it's my own good, if it's my own works, then Lord, I have nothing to give. Lord, I have you this morning, so I'm glad that now I have everything. Yes. Lord, I need your touch. I cannot in no way, shape, or form stand here by myself. I need you, if you would, to fill me, to cleanse me, and fill me, and then touch me at that special touch this morning. And I may preach as you would have for me to preach. May every heart be attentive this morning, every mind, every ear as they hear. May we look at ourselves today. Then may we look to you. And I'll thank you and praise you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, we've been preaching the past three Sundays <coughs> on the subject of sin. That has been the main theme, if you would. We started out with the sorrows of sin. A general message, if you would, about just the sorrows of sin. Then we looked at the captives of sin. And we use Samson as an example as he was a captive and laid in the prison house and and uh, many things happened there. As we tried to show you how many people are a captive of sin. Then last week we looked at the seriousness of sin. And we used David, King David as an example how serious sin is. And sin is not just a game. And it's not just a, uh, just a, a little... Uh, bad day, but it's really serious when we look at sin. Now this morning we want to pick up right where we left off uh, and go a, not necessarily another route, but a more uh, individual route. And we want to look at the personal sin. The personal sin this morning. Now people ask and have asked uh, why preach on sin? Why preach on sin? We all know that there's sin. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we know it all. Remember that message? I mean, we're smart. We're smart. Look at you. Look at the shape you're in. You got it. You got all that. Right? Look at how you live. I mean, you got it all exactly right. We know it all. We know it all. But I'm going to tell you why I preach on sin this morning. To start with, I preach on sin because it's of what it's done to my family. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right. That's the first reason I preach on sin. I preach on sin because of what it's done to my family. How that it's 
separated family. Separated my family. Not just mine, but it separated your family. Families that were close and, and you couldn't uh, drive a wedge nowhere. To watch sin separated. Unrepentant sin. Not just sin, but unrepentant sin that separates families today. That's why I preach on sin. You understand that, don't you? It not just separates families, but it saddens families. I don't know of a family today that's not saddened because of sin. If you got any sadness this morning at all in your life or in down at your house, it's because of sin. You hear me? Because of sin. Not only does it separate and sadden, but it sickens. I don't know of a family right now that's not sickened in some way by sin. Now I'm not talking sickness. Because somebody's sick don't mean they're sinning. You hear me? I'm talking about how sin sickens you. Yeah. Alright? You know, make you puke. What I mean? Turn your stomach. Mess with you, if you would. Sick. I don't know of a family yet, my family, your family, that's not scarred by sin. We're scarred. I got scarred. You got scarred. I've got wounds of sin. My own sin. I'm not talking about what people's done to me. That's that's junk. What I've done. Are you hearing me? See, all sin is against the Lord. Where you do it to somebody or not, it's again the law. <coughs> but why I preach on sin is because of family. And it's not just that. Why I preach on sin this morning is because of what it's done to my friends. Not just what it's done to my family. My family, even if I just went personal, my family, just the secret family. I know of, of many this morning that ought to be in the house of God in my family that are not in the house of God this morning, not because they got a cold, not because they're uh, crippled up, but because of sin. They're not sitting in the house of God serving God this morning. Then I've got friends. The reason I preach about sin and against sin is because of what it's done to my friends. i got some dear friends this morning, and sin has ruined them. Ruin them. Ruin their life. Their life is a mess. They can't even function properly. They can't even think properly because of sin. Right now, I've got some dear friends. They used to serve God, but you couldn't tell it. I've got some dear friends that used to even preach, but you'd never know it. If you would just meet them, you would have think that they was uh, the worst sinner upon the earth. But they used to stand behind a pulpit and carry a King James Bible, as we like to say. But I preach about sin because of what it's done to my family and what it's done to my friends. I've got dear friends this morning. Because of sin, they're going to hell. Because of sin, some of them are backslid on God. Because of sin, their life is being destroyed little at a time, little at a time, every day. That's why I preach about sin. Yeah. Preach about sin because of what it's done to my family. How it separated them and sickened them and how it's uh, stressed them out. It's done everything this morning. It's scarred them, if you will. Think about it. What it's done to my friends has been the same thing. It's separated them. i got friends that I used to run with in church, you understand. Now, when I was backslid on God, I didn't have no friends. I didn't want no friends. I didn't like nobody. I resented everybody. Now, I went to church all the time, you understand. I've always been to church. I'm just talking about when I was really back to sleep. Are you listening to me? Now, understand, I've been in church over 50 years. The longest I was ever out of church was three weeks. 50 years. 
I'm talking about when I was backslid. Yeah. Carrying my Bible to church. When I didn't want no friends. Are you hearing me? It separated friends. Sin separates friends. Sin gets you where you don't want to run with nobody. I didn't want to run with nobody because of the sin in my life. I got friends this morning that don't want to run with me no more because of the sin in their life. Right. Now, a couple of them are really nice. They say, I don't want to bring you down. That ain't why they don't want to run with me. Right. Because they can't enjoy what they're doing and run with me. Right. That's why I'm not, no, I'm not stupid. But that's why I preach about sin this morning. I preach about sin not only because of what it's done in my family and not only because of what it's done in my friends, but I preach about sin this morning because of what it's done to my father. I'm not talking about my daddy. I'm talking about my father that's in heaven this morning. I preach about sin because of what it's done to him. How it saddened him to look down and see his creation, if you would, his sons and his daughters, if you would, how it saddened him so to the point that he had to give his only son to die on an old rugged cross this morning because of their sin. It saddens a father when he's seen the sin. It saddens a father when he sees you sin. It does. I believe not only does it sadden him, it's, it separates him. Did it not separate the father from us? Is that not why he had to send his son? Because there is the one mediator between God and men, and that's the man Christ Jesus, but we're not separated from him. That's why I preach on sin. Preach on sin because it saddens God's heart and because it separates God from us, if you would. How about if it sickens him? Did he not tell the church, the Christians, that he would spew us out of his mouth if we were just lukewarm, living and comfortable in sin? Does it not sicken him? Sickens him. That's why I preach on sin, because it separates us from the Father. It saddens the Father. It sickens the Father, if you would. Huh? It's scarred him. All of time and eternity. As we're enjoying the joy of heaven, we'll still look upon the prince of the nails in his hands and his feet and his brow and his side and understand that because of them prints, if you would, because of that, because of sin, yeah. that's why I preach about sin. So that's why I'm preaching to sin. Because of what it's done in the family. Because of what it's done in the brain. Because of what it's done in the father. But I've been awful. Uh, what would be the right word? Genuine. The past three weeks. It's really been genuine preaching. Talk to me. Yeah. I mean, I really, really, now I didn't name no one of them, old name. <laughs> Have it. <laughs> Past three weeks, I ain't named not one of your names. Have Because it. it's been general preachers. But this morning, it's going to be personal preachers. Uh -oh. Now, does that mean I'm going to name your name? I don't know yet. Your name ain't wrote down here, but I just have this couple of folks all the time. That'll be up to the Lord and how He reveals it to me. For the secret thing belongs to the Lord, but that which belongs unto us is revealing us. That's what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 29. Is still there. All right? The personal sin this morning. See, we can all come to the church house and sit through a general message on sin and escape pretty well. We can listen to the stars of sin and say, That's right, preacher. We can listen about the captives of sin. That's right, preacher. We can listen about the seriousness of sin. That's right, preacher. You tell them, you tell them, you tell them. But when it comes down to the personal sin, when it comes down to us, yeah. what's in our life and what's going off in our life, then that's when uh, the rub comes in, as I say. Yeah. It's hard to deal with personal sin. It's hard. 
Now, I can deal with personal problems, but I hate to deal with personal sin. I would rather deal with your sin because it'd be fun. Is it not? It's going to be fun because we spend a lot of our time discussing others. We spend an awful lot of time with others sins and promoting it and broadcasting it and spreading it. And, don't we? So it must be a joy because we are naturally a happy people. Right? Boy, we don't like this person. So we're going to look at it just a little bit personal this morning. And I promise you I won't call more than 10 or 12 of your name. <laughs> Now, I'm going to preach to the preacher again. Is that all right? I'll preach to the preacher again because I know the preacher. You don't know the preacher. All right? You know the preacher's name and maybe his address and maybe his phone number. But you don't know the preacher. But I know the preacher. Guess what the preacher is? He's a sin. But just so you'll know, just so I won't feel left out, so are you. <laughs> you be one too. We all be one together. How about that? And guess who's I'm going to face? Mine. Guess who's I got to deal with? Mine. Guess who's I got to live with? Mine. Guess who is the only one that can repent from my sins? Me. Guess who's, guess who's the only one's got to talk to the Lord about my sin? Me. It's a personal sin this morning. I can pray for you. I can pray for the situation you're in. I cannot repent for you. I cannot get saved for you. I cannot get the blood of Christ to wash you clean. I can go on your behalf and ask God to show you mercy and not kill you because of your sorriness. But I can't go no further than that. It's personal. Right. Thank you. Like this personal to me. I find here a person. I find here a name given. I find here where it discusses one person. And we're going to look at him. And we're going to look at the preacher. And we'll probably go ahead and look at you too. Because I'm a generous kind of a soul. Today. All right. Here I find to start with this morning. It says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may shift you as wheat. Now Jesus said, But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, but thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said to them, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both in the prison and the death. You're not going to find a better Christian than you're looking at right now, Jesus. I will never do what others do. I will never say what others say. I will never go where others go. I will never act like others act. I will always, always, I'm good. I'm, I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I'll never do you wrong. When I miss, it'll be cause something else come up and I couldn't get there. When I act like a fool, it's because I made a mistake. When I cuss, it's because I smashed my finger. When I drink, it's because I got to sit on my nerves. When I do dope, it's because I'm trying to win the dope pit. You understand, God. It ain't because I'm wrong. It ain't because I'm a sinner. It's because I'm right. I'm perfect. I'm going to do it right. I'll never leave your side. These other things are just trying to get along with That's what When he said, I'll go all the way, I'll even die for you. You know what? You know, nowhere in the Bible does the Lord want you to die for him. He wants you to die to the world. He wants you to die to yourself. But he wants you to live for him. <laughs> Peter said, I'll do it. I'll do it. What Peter was doing. He's doing exactly what all of us do. We roll in here on Sunday. Some come back on Sunday night and fewer come back on Wednesday. We roll in here with the attitude that we're going to do right. Am I right? 
We don't roll in here with attitude we're going to do wrong. We roll in here with attitude we're going to do right. That's our intention. Sometimes we get enough nerve to say it. Right? You know what we're setting ourselves up for? Personal sin. Now follow me just a minute. Simon Peter is being talked to by the Lord. Now I've been dealing mainly with Christian sins. The sorrows and the captives and the, the seriousness and even this morning. Next Sunday we'll probably get to the lost man. I don't know. We'll find the Lord. What I want you to think about is how we set ourselves up. <coughs> when we say, I will never we say, I will never. Katie, bar the door. When you say, you'll never. That's when old Slewfoot himself gathers up all the imps of hell and comes knocking on your doorstep to show you when you say you'll never, he sees that big eye that says, I will never. He said, come on, boys, we got them now. They done said I. When they, if they had said he won't let me, they'll back off. But when we say I'll never as a Christian, here comes the devil and his imps, and he comes and surrounds you that he may shift you as we. Here we find a man that just had identified Jesus as the Son of God and Jesus tells him that I will build my church upon that profession that I am God and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And Peter, you're going to do good. And turns right around and says you acted just like the devil. Yeah. Is that what he tells Peter? Yeah. He says, get behind me, Satan. Yeah. You know what he tells Peter? Yeah. He didn't say, get behind me, Peter. He said, get behind me, Satan. Yeah. Ain't that something to call a Christian? I wonder how they come to call that. <laughs> get behind me, Satan, Mark. Get behind me, Satan, Rick. Did he not? I mean, he did. I doubt very seriously. I believe it's close to Peter. I doubt very seriously. Right? Our personal sin. Listen carefully. We set ourselves up for ascension. When it comes to personal sin this morning of a Christian, it's because they've been through the sin. Y'all remember what a sin is? Y'all know some of you young ones probably don't. Some of y'all don't know how to make bread or nothing. Y'all get it out of a bag, out of the box. Yeah, but, but you know, you got that thing you stick down the flowers, go in little tiny holes in it. You shake it, sift your flour. Then if some of you older ones know you got that coffee can with that crank on the side. You crank that. Huh? What it does, it just makes it real fine. It puts you through the little hole. Huh? Satan ain't going to run you through a big hole. He's going to put you through a bunch of little holes. He ain't going to make you jump off the deep end all at once. He's going to run you through the sea of, so it will destroy you. So it will grind you down to nothing. He ain't going to do it all at once. He's going to tear you apart. Tear you up like a can of crab, as they used to say. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's going to do. It's time of sitting. With that sifting, see, he brings temptation. He knows how to do it. Our personal sin does not just happen, but it comes gradually, if you would. It comes in the little homes, if you would. It comes through the sin as he comes in tempting you. Yeah. Temptation itself is not sin. It's how we react to that temptation. And every one of us is tempted when we're drawn away with our own lust, the Bible says. Amen. And when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. That's what the Bible says. Are you following me this morning? Right. That sifting comes, temptation comes. 
Temptation of things you thought you would never do. Temptations of things you thought you would never say. Temptations of things you thought you would never look upon. Temptations of things of ways that you would thought you would never act. That's what he brings your way. He brings it. You say, well, he finds me in a weak moment. No, actually, he wants you in a strong moment. When you're cock of wall. When I will never back off. I ain't never going to quit. I ain't never going to backslide. I ain't never going to deny you. He said, boy, oh boy, I like this fellow. Peter decided he wasn't going to be humble. Did I tell you I humbled myself this week? I really humbled myself this week. I really did. I drove plumb from Kentucky to Mount Lookout in a Ford. <laughs> I got as low person on person on, just on purpose as I could get. Go all the way from Louisville, Kentucky to Mount Lookout in the Ford. <laughs> That's my humility. And God blessed me and I got back in that shield away. <laughs> you lower yourself to lift you up. <laughs> See, that's my kind of humility. Hear me? Problem is, that's the same flavor of most fire. Right. See, we may not say that we'll never do it, but we live as if we are. <coughs> we live as if we don't do it. We may not say I'll never do wrong, but we sure act like we've never done. See, our attitude, we looked at last week, our attitude about sin is shown by the reaction of our repentance. Yeah. Yeah. Are you following me? What I want you to look at is the temptations that come with the sifting. Temptations that causes us or brings us and tempts us to the thing we thought we'd never get involved in in any way, shape, or form. We got a choice. Do you know when we just set ourselves up that we're not going to do it, and temptations come, we'll do it every time. When we say we'll never do it, never say never. You say never, you've done none of it. You hear me? You follow me? You'll be okay? Think about it now. Now with that temptation, it comes something that's got to work right in together. It's timing. It ain't just going to be a temptation just any old time. It's going to be when the time is right. When Satan decides to sift you, he don't do it on your terms. He does it on his terms. <laughs> He does it in a way that he knows he will win. Yeah. See, if we were going to fight, I would not call you and say, I'm coming to your house to fight you. I'll sneak to your house and hide behind the door or the corner, and when you come out, I will sucker punch you without hesitation. I will slip up behind you and hit you behind the ear and laugh when you hit the ground. what Satan does. Right. He don't send you an email. Right. Get ready. I'm coming. No. He'll slip up on you. Right. Right. When you don't bow. Right. Yeah. Right. He's sifting because it's personable to him. He's not interested in tearing the whole church down at one time. He wants to come to you and then 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 you and he'll work on you and if he can get one to mess up, if he can get one to fall flat, then all right, there's one. And then that one's that huddle around him, he said, now we'll get them. And then the ones that come to the rest, let's get them. And he'll finally then get everybody like that, but he'll work on you one at a time. And he'll carry you on. 
He don't care how big you think you are, how big you are, how important you are. He don't care whether you're famous or whether you're the lowest. You may think you're the one that's no account, but he'll not let you go neither. He'll catch you in a time. He'll catch you when you're discouraged. He'll catch you when you're depressed. He'll catch you when you're aggravated. When do you make the dumbest mistake? When do you make the dumbest choices? When you're discouraged. When do you make the idiot choices? When you're depressed. Right? When do you make the decisions that seem like smack you in the face immediately? When you're aggravated. I wonder if I could get a witness of honesty. When you have got aggravated and said something you shouldn't say. <laughs> Timing. Then I want us. Timing. Satan sitting there and following. Watch. Get no like this shit on me. No, just draw it on me. Let's just have old song so come back. You don't like them anymore. Yeah. Huh? He don't do it all at once. He runs you through the little hole. Yeah. I'm talking about sins. What I'm talking about this morning. I'm talking about the personal sin. Our sin this morning. And when we're tempted and when the time is just right, he hits us right in the face with it. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Then I look at it. You say, well, where's all that in the scripture? Well, I mean, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Oh, but I prayed for you. That's the good part. Yeah. But thou art converted, strength and brethren. Peter, Peter said, Don't pray for me. I don't believe you. Listen, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Right? I have been so foolish to say that I feel so good that I can swing over hell on a wet needle with a water pistol and holler bullet the devil and keep it going. I have said foolish things. The dumbest thing I could have ever seen. Yeah. Well, just soon I swung back. You kept the rope. <laughs> I'm good, Shay. I just got on my knees talking to you. I just prayed myself. I think the problem with our personal sin is wrapped up in one word. P-R-I-D-E. Pride. That's what causes our personal sin is pride. It's about us. Not about him. Right. That's what calls us for personal sin. Yeah. Right. He says, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both in the prison and the dead. He looks at Peter and says, Oh, son, do you not realize what you're fixing to do? Do you not realize what you're fixing to do? How, how often does he look down from the past and says, Oh, Lord, do you not realize what you're fixing to do? So we looked at the sifting this early. Not only the sifting this morning, let's look at the sinning. Can we get personal about the sins? Can we? Y'all ready? Y'all look excited. Now, I won't do that because I've got too many. I've got too many. So let's just see if we can't just cover one. I believe one will cover all of them. All right? How about we just look at verse 54? How about we, we looked at the sifting of the tempting and the timing. How about we just look at verse 54 and we'll find it all wrapped up in this for this morning. It says, they took 
Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. The next sentence is the cause of it all. And Peter followed afar off. You know what causes our personal sin this morning? It's when we follow afar off. Sin won't get around the Savior. And when we get close to the Savior, sin seems to start trickling away. But when we start falling afar off, now I'm not talking about in our outward appearance. I'm not talking about whether you visit a bus route. I'm not talking about whether you hand out a hundred tracts. I'm not talking about how pretty you sing for the Lord or where all you go and how many sermons you preach and revivals you preach. What I'm asking you this morning is how close you're falling with you and Him personally this morning on y'all's relationship, on you and Him, on y'all's talk about uh, the things you need to talk about and get along with the things you need to be getting along with and that communion and that fellowship personally this morning. I know enough about this Bible. I've said it before. I know what buttons to push to get you to holler amen and be as backslid as any boss. I know without study, I can do a little outline together. I can alliterate it. I'm a I can pray. I know as long as I pray in Jesus' name, nobody will question. A lot of people just listen to see if that's how you pray. Huh? Amen. Yeah. I know how to I know what to I know y'all to visit. I know y'all to soul I know y'all to knock on the door. I know y'all to sing hymns. In fact, in fact, I probably no, I know some don't know. And if I don't know it, I'll still be happy to see it. So don't. I know how to do it. That don't mean my heart's good. I can teach. I can make an outline and teach you something of knowledge and help you. I'm not that far gone. I've got enough smarts about me. I can do that. I've done it long enough to do that. Are you hear me? Don't be hard, when I fall or I fall off, it's because of my personal sin. Because when it's not my personal sin, I want to get close to it. I want to love on him, and I want him to love on me. But when that personal sin comes in, then I start backing off. Because I got to, because he can't handle the sin around me. And I got to back off over here. And I got to back off over here. And I'll go ahead and follow him. Hey, everybody, I'm the preacher. Hey, everybody, I'm the pastor. Hey, everybody, I know the Bible. Hey, everybody, I know how to pray. And before I know it, I'm a way over here. But I'm doing everything everybody else is doing. But my heart is far from him. Does not Jesus even say that you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Talking about the personal sin. It don't have to be up on a billboard. It don't have to be listed over in Corinthians. It don't have to be one of the ten. How about it's just maybe the one where my love has grown cold. When I look at the sinning this morning, I look to sifting, I look to sinning, I see how careless it is. We okay? How careless was Peter? He was so careless that he lost his temper and chopped off Mount Josiah. 
He got that way from being prideful, saying, I'll never. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. One person. Yeah. Yeah. Then he started falling the far off. And when he started falling the far off this morning, hear me carefully, he got careless. He got careless with his mouth. I mean, you do it home. Yeah. You do on the job. Why don't you in a testimony? Because you're not going to be the curse. Thank you. Are you hearing me? What I'm trying to tell you this morning is when we look at this sin, it is serious. And we are captive. And there is sorrows in it because it's personable this morning. It's personal. We're careless about it. Hey, if you're a Christian, why did I say that? I'm just I, I didn't think before. I really am, but I wasn't following him in there. I'm going to say that here. We try to work it around. Well, that ain't really what I mean. Did you ever say it? Well, that ain't what I really meant. It was a slip. Oh, I slip. How do you slip? You slip when you're careless. You stub your toe when you're careless. Right? If you pick your feet up when you walk, you won't stub your toe. You know what's sad? It's when we go to sin. When we get sifted, we go to sin. We're not just careless, but we become contagious. We become contagious. I read over in John chapter 21. It says, Peter said, I go fishing. It says, after this, I go fishing. And the slave said, well, we'll just go with you. Did you ever go sin and call somebody else did? Yeah. Now, I'm not preaching again this. I'm just going to ask you a question. How many here has ever smoked a cigarette? How many smoked your first one by yourself? One, two, three, three. How many smoked your first one by somebody? How many hid when you done it? Why is that? Why did you hide? Huh? The majority of everybody done it with somebody. I ain't preaching to you. That's your business. Same way with chewing. How many, when you chewed your first chew, you went and bought it yourself? Or did you dip your hand in somebody else's boat? Okay. How many when you drink? We will we'll get close to here because the majority of people drink are not old enough to buy. When they start, <coughs> don't raise your hand here because they'll get embarrassed if we keep going. Right. <laughs> How many done it, others? It's always with somebody. You know you can't commit adultery by yourself. <laughs> Do you know that? It's impossible. They've got to be somebody else of the same mind. Yep. Right? It's contagious. See, when you start going through the sea of then you start sinning. And when you start sinning, you'll be careless. And it'll be contagious. You 
you know, and, and, and God knows I don't have nobody's name in mind when I say this, okay? But it's tough to say because it said so much, all right? If I think about it, I'll think about it. So we've got to pray for sin. You know, we say we can't come to church when we're sick. But we don't want to infect the church. That shows we have no compassion because we just want to affect everybody at home. Yeah. We'll sure take her down to the job hoping everybody misses the state has to stick there. We won't go to the church house because we don't want to be contagious. Amen. That's right. I think it might be able to see it. Okay. Amen. I'm nice. I ain't called nobody's name. But mine. Right? We okay? Amen. The sifting and then the sinning. The sinning resulted from pride to attempted murder to cussing to denial that you're even part of the family. That's all what Peter done within a couple of hours. <coughs> Listen to me. We'll hurry. If that's all there was, we'd be in sad shape. That's as depressing as I know to preach. I've been depressed all week long for a preacher. I have. I've been helped and depressed and cut and healed, smiled, picked up, bloody, wiped off. Heard some wonderful preaching. Holy Ghost to squeeze my heart and told me <laughs> your husband is uh, You know he's one of my heroes. He really is. Seriously. And uh, I had this drink preach 24 hours a day. I would never get tired of this drink. Yeah. You know what he told me yesterday? He said my whole ministry has been a flop. This is the kind of preaching we heard. He said I've not done anything right. I'm forgetting about 2013. It's done been a waste. I'm going to try to concentrate on next year. That's the kind of preaching we heard. Okay? What it was doing was just showing me I'm sick. That's all. Because we all right this morning. Everybody all right? I know it's hard to shout. I don't expect you to shout when I preach on sin. Okay? I, I know that. But if you just look at me and tell me. And I have if I looked at sifting and I looked at the sinning, I'm going to go off and jump off the bridge when I go home. Because I find no hope. But boy, I'm here to tell you this morning, when you got personal sin, there happens just to be a personal sin. Is that all right this morning? I'm here to tell you when you do wrong, that there's still somebody a watching. Now that's not always good because he's watching this morning, but I want you to listen close to me this morning. When I look at the sifting, I look at the sinning, I look at a Savior this morning. And the first thing I find about this Savior is I find compassion. Because he looked on Peter right here in this passage that we read, that he looked here and saw Peter when he was a sin. Right in the middle of it, he looked at him. Yeah. But I read over where it says that Jesus looked upon them and had compassion. Yeah. I believe his compassions fail not. Right. And his mercies are new evermore. Right. And the blood still cleanses us for yeah. huh? I find that with this sifting and the sinning, I find the Savior this morning. I see compassion, but I see something else. I see confrontation. Because you'll find that when Peter went a fishing, Jesus hunted him down. Yeah. Yeah. Hunted him down and fixed breakfast for him. Yeah. And then after they eat, and he made sure he was cared for with compassion and love, he said, now, Simon Barjona, do you love me or not? Ain't that personal? He says, hey boy, about y'all, I'm talking to you, Simon Peter. I'm talking to you. I'm going to tell you how personal this sin gets this morning. If you belong to him, he's going to confront you about it. Yeah. Yes, 
He's going to come to your doorstep. And he's going to talk to you about you this morning. And I'm hoping that I've opened your eyes just a little bit that you'll talk to him about your personal sin this morning. Compassion and confrontation. And if that's all they was, we'd still be in bad shape. But boy, they was cleansing. And the reason I know they was cleansing, because after Peter answered him, he said, then follow me. And he don't have anybody following him that he don't clean up when they go to follow. Amen. Amen. Hear me today. He'll clean you up. You know how he cleans you up? He cleans you up with wonderful, red, pure blood this morning. And he takes him old filthy sins and he washes them red with that blood and you come out as white as a driven snow this morning and because of his grace and because of his mercy and because of his love and because of his forgiveness that he don't throw you away that he makes sure like he did Simon Peter he said you go tell my disciple Mary and make sure that you tell Peter too that he can come and look at this empty grave and know that salvation is real and forgiveness is real and I'm real and I don't throw nobody away this morning and I take you for what you are though you be dirty though you be worthless though you be trifling oh there's a Savior this morning and loves you all the way this morning He loves you completely He'll wrap you up and He'll hug you up and He'll wash you as clean as can be and said now follow me Follow me now that I've cleaned you. Yeah, yeah. That's what he does. He don't go by the church like that. He does it with you. Do it with you. Do it. But you gotta deal with it. You gotta deal with it. Hide it if you want. Peter couldn't hide. Peter just threw a cuss and fit. Yeah. Huh? Threw a cuss just like we did. Huh? Threw a cuss and fit just so he done it. Didn't have to say a word. I believe that guy died. I believe here he is, tied up. Going into judgment hall, Peter lets off all that. When a party will come home and repent, he said, I've sinned again. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, I've sinned again heaven and again there. You know who you sin again first? Shut up. Be happy. He stands here this morning. 
Say it. All right, give it to me. Come on. Give it to me. Come on. Let me have it. Let me have it. I paid for it. Let me have it. I became sin for you that you might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Come on, give it to me. Jesus paid it all. All to Him. I, come on, give me your sin. Come on. Yeah. Give it to me. I'll have it. Or you can keep it. And tomorrow will be worse. Because we'll go through the sea. Next day will be worse. The next day will be worse. Oh, you get Now, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shape. Okay? Yesterday, Tony Shirley came to me and said, uh, uh, I'm going to put gas in your car. I said, No, 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 no. Yes, I'm going to put gas in your car. That's okay. <laughs> One thing because Tony Sherman's real good. No? I need a gas. No. I need gas. Why would I want to pay for it if he's speaking? <laughs> I watched him walk up to another preacher last night and said, Listen, you leaving uh, in the morning? He said, No, I'm leaving right after service. He said, Don't leave. I'm going to put gas in your tank. He said, I'll stay right here until daylight if I have to. It'll take a hundred dollars to fill my tank. <laughs> he was happy about it. I don't know of anybody. And I heard him ask, say, No, sir, you ain't doing that for me. Having a bit food. No more foolish than it would be for you to sit here this morning and want to pay your own sin. Somebody said, let me take care of it this morning. Would it make more sense for you to get one? Okay. All right. We just had a little girl done. Right? What she really come to you with, Maria, was say, listen, I got a sin problem, and uh, do I have a choice? Do I got to pay? And you said, no, honey, you don't have to pay. She said, okay. That's really what she done. And this morning, that's exactly the choice you got. Sure you do. To be in. <laughs> How about Jesus paid it all for you? I'm talking about your personal sin this morning. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm as serious about this as I can be. The reason I preach about sin is because of what's done to my family. What it's done to my friends. What it's done to the Father. Hey, the reason I'm preaching about sin is what it's doing to you this morning. It's sifting you, and you're sifting, and you're being sifted, and you're sinning this morning. But oh, there's a Savior this morning. Savior. I wonder if you come right now. Right now. Don't wait. You come right now. And you deal with your personal sin. You come, God, I'm sorry. He says, okay. God, you, I, I, I know him. Okay. God, I work. Yeah, I know him. You come on. He'll take care of all of it. Don't matter what it is. Don't matter what you've done. It don't matter where you've been. He'll take him every one this morning. If you've never known him, guess what he'll do? He'll take you and put you in the family and introduce himself to you this morning. 